What's happening, my fellow ghouls and ghoulettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles, and today we are gonna be pimping out. Oh boy, okay. <laughs> this sweet tooth mask from Twisted Metal. So, this is clearly a mass produced mask, but we're gonna pimp him out, make him look like a trillion bucks. Anything's better than this. And it's not throwing shade at mass produced masks, but well, when you get mass produced, you get mass produced. So the idea is to mount this on a nice form to get its shape back because it's a bit misshapen at the moment. It is latex. We're then gonna go in and obviously take the hair off, replace it with some much longer red hair, and also give it a nice dynamic paint job, put some leather strapping on there or faux leather strapping, see how we go, and just really gnarly this up. So what I'm going for is like my own take on Sweet Tooth, but at the same time, you know, elements from the TV series and the games. Now, I am going to leave both eyes like so. I am going to do some trimming out here, but I do want to leave these cracked areas because there is a lot of detail in this skull, which is great. But obviously, we've got to make sure we can like mount the teeth and stuff like that on a pre-existing mask form. Now, the idea is to do this as cheaply as possible. So utilizing things you can get from like Halloween stores, department stores, uh, bargain stores and stuff like that, just so you don't break the bank. But you have fun in the process. So, with that being said, let's get to it. Oh, hey friend, it's time for some shitty commentary. So as you see here, I'm doing the very highly skilled process of removing the original clown hair. Now, we're not gonna be utilizing this, it's way too short, but I'm just gonna grab some scissors and just cut around certain edges of the eyes to widen them a little and take advantage of that beautiful crack detail. Now this particular mask you see right here was a bargain. It was three bucks, marked down from five at Spotlight, and that is going to act as our support shell. And the fact that it's smiling as well, exactly like the Sweet Tooth mask, is an absolute blessing in disguise. And as you can see, I'm just kind of futzing with it and just draping it over the shell just to get everything in place before we permanently glue it down. I was really happy with that. But we do have to widen the eyes on the original base mask, otherwise you're gonna see them showing through under the original Sweet Tooth mask. And this was just a process of going for back and forth between scissors and a Stanley knife, but overall it just will add to how good this mask will look in the end, just by having that support there and not a flimsy looking mask. Now I'm just grabbing some good old cheap and nasty super glue to secure the latex mask down to the Halloween plastic mask and this stuff stuck together so well, especially when it came to the, the latex section. So I'm just going to grab a pencil now and just mark out where I'm going to cut the top of the mask off because as most of you know who, who are fans of Sweet Tooth, this mask rides way too high. We need to get rid of that excess on top. So just very carefully scissoring away that, that excess excess part and just really shaping it back into a, a smooth kind of um, edge around the side of the mask. So now we're ready to do our base coat. So I've got an ultra matte white spray paint from Rust-Oleum and just spritzing it on. You don't want to go too thick with it, otherwise it, you do risk it cracking, but just misting it on like a fine powder. And I'm going to grab some clear Plasti Dip and this is going to essentially seal in that matte white because if you do leave it as is, eventually over time it will crack off. But about two or three good coats of clear Plasti Dip will do. And as you can see there, we have a perfect blank canvas now that will now hold its shape. So I'm just gonna grab some watered down black shoe polish and the brand is smart. I don't know what the hell has happened to Kiwi. I think they're slowly phasing it out of Coles and Woolies and it's heartbreaking, but regardless, we still have some black shoe polish to work with. So like I said, just ever so lightly watered down. If you water it down too much, it's gonna bead away. Once we've covered the entire surface, I'm gonna grab some isopropyl alcohol and spray it onto a sponge. This is like a car cleaning sponge, so it's very fine and whisper away the excess and what is left is that shoe polish in all that beautiful detail that you see right there, especially in the teeth. I want the teeth looking gnarly and disgusting. So I'm just gonna grab a pink oil color and start to go in and color the gums followed by a, a crimson red oil color. Now the reason why I use oil color, I just love the way uh, you can control it and stuff like that. And once I do this process, I do seal it up once again with another layer of Plasti Dip. Now I'm just going in with some watered down brown shoe, shoe polish, just a little bit of water for that matter and really staining the teeth, especially the tops of the teeth where the teeth stop and the gums start. You really want these things looking rotten, but not rotten all over, but you can 
definitely tell that they're starting to decay where the gums are. And I really love how that turned out and just grabbing that brown shoe polish and just going into certain areas, especially in the cracked areas and soiling them and staining them. Now I'm just going to grab a Liquitex, a heavy body Liquitex red for the nose and the lips. And this was essentially just one coat. And that's what I love about heavy body acrylics. Most times out of 10, you just need one coat. I made sure to really take my time uh, with, with the lipstick just to make sure it all kind of evened out and it was symmetrical and it just looked the part. I'm just going back in now with an ivory black oil color just to stain the lipstick and also the nose. I don't want this thing looking pristine at all. I'm just grabbing that oil color as well and going back in around certain parts of the cracks and making sure they're all highlighted. Now, we're gonna move on to the eye stab. So I've got some liquid latex and some toilet paper with my life cast and just building it up in layers to make essentially an appliance that will be glued to the inside of the mask. Now I've also got some talcum powder mixed into the latex so it's thickened up and I'm going to do that uh, trademark eye wound that, that the cross that Sweet Tooth has. Now I'm just going to grab some flesh colored acrylic paint and essentially you're not really going to see this by the time it's covered in blood but just having that base color there definitely helps. So the appliance is dry, we're gonna peel that off the life cast. Now I'm gonna be using an anodized red. This is a duplicolor, this is for spray painting cars and car bodies and stuff like that, but it actually works as a really good fake blood for say like resin uh, busts and props and stuff like that and it adheres really well to latex. I'm just going to get the excess of the, what I sprayed in the cup and put it on the mask where the eye stab would occur. Just really just gnarling it up, dripping it down the mask there and getting a brush and uh, flicking the bristles against the surface as well. Like it's just got that nice horrific splatter effect. So after peeling it off and gluing it on the inside, we have the appliance all mounted inside the mask. And it looks great. It just looks chunky, gnarly, and disgusting. Now, when it comes to the strapping, I'm using five cheap dog collars I got from the bargain store. They didn't have all of the same design, but what I did was utilize the fact that there are two studded ones and I can have them on either side and we also have an O-ring. So I'm just gonna punch holes into the perimeter of the mask where the straps will be strapped down. But first I'm gonna glue the pieces in place, the straps to the mask before riveting them in. And that just essentially acts as insurance. So I've got an antique brass and a regular bar brass. I had to mix these two together uh, because I needed a longer stem. Now you can hammer these in place, but I chose to use pliers because I love the dent that it leaves there. So we're all rigged up, ready to go. Now I did glue those around uh, the O-ring and they were secured pretty nicely. The, the glue definitely held that vinyl in place. It, it's, it's like a faux leather slash vinyl belt. Um, and in terms of weathering it, it was just an ivory black, a heavy body ivory black acrylic paint. And it stained so well. You definitely can use a black oil color I just think it sometimes can take too long to dry and it might not soak into the surface properly. And in this case, with something that isn't leather, it definitely might be the case where it won't soak in and it'll rub off on your hands and just get disgusting. Now for the brand new clown hair, I'm utilizing this $10 zombie clown mask, I guess you could call it from Kmart. All I want are those bits of hair, but I wanna keep them in place. So I'm gonna go around and cut the actual surface that um, it's sewn into. Otherwise it's on a coil and it'll just be one long piece and just get messy. But once they were cut off, I folded them in half super glued them in place and then i'm going to get some more cheaper nasty super glue glue it on and then adhere it to the inside of the mask and it was the perfect length it's the perfect amount of hair and all that's left to do was to style it uh, in the upwards position and back and then we're ready for the final reveal And there you have it guys, the Sweet Tooth Mask Makeover is done and dusted. I had so much fun with this one and it did not break the bank at all. It's amazing <laughs> what some paint, an extra bit of clown hair and some dog collars can do to a mask. With that being said, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you are. Hope you're happy. Be merry, be silly. And until next time, ghouls and ghoulets, please always remember, cosplayers do it best. <laughs>